Getting access to mental health treatment just got a whole lot easier. All you have to do is dial three numbers, 988. And if you do, you'll immediately be connected to a mental health hotline. The number is now active. And the hope is that its simplicity will save lives. Here's Health and Human Services Secretary Xavier Becerra. Easy to remember, but more than a number. 988 is a message. When you hear 911, you think emergency and rescue. Starting tomorrow, when you hear 988, think crisis and rescue. If you're about to fall, reach out. We will catch you. I'm joined now by the lawmaker who authored the legislation that created 988, Democratic uh, Congressman Seth Moulton of Massachusetts. He's also a Marine veteran who did combat tours in Iraq. Uh, Congressman Moulton, thank you for joining and congratulations on this important effort. The National Alliance of Mental Illness has some sobering statistics, as you know. 21% of U.S. adults experienced mental health illness that was serious enough to warrant help in 2020. That's nearly 53 million or one in five adults. But of those adults, only 46% sought help. So how will this 988 number convince people to seek out mental health treatment and make it more accessible to them? Well, there are two fundamental challenges with mental health care in America. The first is that people just don't know where to turn for help. So many Americans who want help, especially in that moment of crisis in the middle of the night, they don't know where to turn. 988 is gonna change that right away. But the second issue is that even Americans who do know how to get help often don't want to. They're embarrassed because of the stigma against mental health care. And I know this personally, Michael. I, it took me a long time to admit after my time in Iraq that I had post-traumatic stress. I didn't have it as bad as other people. I made plenty of excuses for why it didn't really affect me or I didn't need help. But when I finally made the decision to go see a therapist, it really, it really made a massive difference in my life. I don't think I'd be sitting here as a member of Congress today if I hadn't dealt with post-traumatic stress. So I know this stigma personally. And I think just by having conversations like this, by talking about 988, we're going to help chip away at that stigma all across the country. So putting the number up on the screen again so that people can memorize it and tell others about it. If someone calls 988, who's actually going to be on the other end of that call? And, and what happens next after that? It's a great question. The first thing that everyone needs to know is that it's completely confidential. You're going to talk to a trained professional, someone who knows how to deal with situations like this. But they're not going to call the police. They're not going to put you on a list. If you're young, they're not going to tell your parents. They're just going to talk to you in this moment of need. And these amazing people who, who staff these lines have an incredible track record of success. You know, and another amazing statistic about suicide across America is that nine out of 10 Americans who try to commit suicide but fail don't try it again. So in other words, they, they regret even trying. So if we can just get people through this desperate moment where they're right on the edge, then we have a good chance of saving their lives for, for good. You teamed up with the son of Robin Williams to create 988. Uh, how did that happen and, and how meaningful was that for you? Well, he actually reached out to, to me after we had passed the bill. I teamed up with a Republican, with a fellow veteran across the aisle, an Air Force veteran from Utah, to get this legislation passed, which, which was remarkably difficult given how much sense it makes. But Robin Williams' son, Zach, has been an incredible advocate because, if, of course, if people don't know about this, uh, then they're not going to use it. It's not going to work. So Zach has a great podcast. He's become a great champion of mental health issues after dealing with uh, all, all of, that he had to, to go through uh, when his father died by suicide, Robin Williams. And so he's helping spread the word. He's talking about this. And hopefully what we're all trying to do is normalize mental health care. We don't want people to think that it's unusual or odd or something to be embarrassed about, that you'd get help for, for things going on in your head, just the same way as you would get help for things going on anywhere else in your body. The number again is 988. Congressman Seth Moulton, thank you very, very much for being with us.